All right, I'm here today. It's Scott with Michigan Pool News, and I'm with Gil Dawes, uh, our uh, CPO trainer extraordinaire, and uh, this is the month of training. Gil, say hi to everybody. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> so am I. So am I. But uh, the reason I wanted to talk to Gil, I brought him in and just, uh, and, and we were thinking about it and uh, for the training this month. Why? Gil, why do you think it is important that, that an operator get the CPO training? Well, let's start out with a little bit of, of accreditation, if you will. Uh, I've been teaching this class for the National Swimming Pool Foundation for 25 years. Started when I was 20. If you had a calculator, you can do the math. I've certified over 3,000 uh, pool wow. operators in Michigan, and a few in Ohio, and a couple in Indiana. So, that, so that, I think it's quite a bit for over 3,000. As I said, I've been doing it for 25 years, so I think I know a little bit about it, what it does and what it doesn't do. As far as what it does, if you have a trained operator or you are a trained operator, you're going to save your district or your condo or your apartment, whatever it might be, a lot of money because you know what you're doing. So therefore, the mechanical room is going to be, your equipment change is going to be less, your, the amount of chemicals that you're going to use are going to be less, uh, anything and everything. But more importantly, the liability is going to be less. If you have a, uh, a situation where you have a litigation surfacing its ugly head, uh, having a pool operator in your camp is one of the best things you can do that really plays well in, in, in our courts in Michigan. The, uh, the obvious thing certainly are is the, is the mechanical end of it. We, in the old days, we used to see that uh, the filters and pumps and everything, they didn't last very long. I mean, they would just go because water chemistry wasn't kept proper, they weren't run properly, and subsequently they didn't last very long. So uh, uh, groups like yourselves and things uh, or, or associations like yourselves were spending a ton of money where they really didn't have to had they had trained operators. The thing I look at is also is, is who is, is certified. And it, it's kind of an ironic scenario because what's happening is all of the uh, the pool operators certainly want to be certified or are so certified. I mean, we have, what, uh, Scott, over 5,000? Uh, yeah, 6,000 pools in Michigan. In, in Michigan, so a lot of them are certified. Uh, a lot of them are not because there's a kind of a, a turnover. A guy goes from the custodial staff to engineering to uh, whatever, who knows. And uh, so we're looking at, we've had superintendents in class, we've had principals in class, we've had uh, Department of Environmental Quality people from Lansing have taken the class. Uh, uh, your local health department people have all taken, the, or most have taken the class. Uh, lifeguards, uh, any, any person within the district, either the school district or the college or the apartments or the condos or rec pools or whoever, those are the people that should take the class because the obvious, as I said before, because the costing less money to operate the pool, making the equipment last longer, to, to look better in, in, in the face of litigation uh, are, are the primary uh, Or just the community, just how good the facility operates in the community. Oh, exactly. They, you know, for, for years I've been saying if you're running a bad, if you're cooking bad food in a restaurant, people are not going to eat there, right? Same way with a swimming pool. If that water is not comfortable, that equipment is not running the way it's supposed to run, they're not coming back. They can go anywhere and swim. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So insurance underwriters also love this as well. Uh, you might find your rates be, might become less or it might be more agreeable with your underwriters if your people are educated. And it doesn't matter the field. It just doesn't matter. Education uh, will lessen the burden uh, in, in any venue and make life good. Do you think that, uh, the, what is it, is it every five years you're supposed to re-up for your um, certification? Yes, every five years. And there's options associated with that. You can take the online uh, course one time uh, in one day and then come and see me the next day but this in industry is changing so quickly uh, with, the, with the main drain applications and the ADA handicap lift applications the new MAC codes coming into being is changing so rapidly it's kind of foolish to take the online class I do offer it and you can take that online one day and one day in, in the classroom with me but uh, if I were you I would I would take both days yeah, I think that uh, I hear from our guys when they do the classroom, too. There's so much uh, give and take because not everybody's equipment room is the same. 
and one operator is talking to another operator to another operator, and they learn from each other in the class. I think that's huge. Exactly. Um, it, it, it is enormous. There's no doubt about it. Just the camaraderie you see in a class where they learn from each other, they learn from me. You don't just take the class and then you're gone. You, we, what we ask you to do is anybody around you, get their name, their phone number, so they can help you if you have an, a, a problem. You take my class, you've got my name and my number until either you die or I die, whichever comes first, to answer any questions, uh, handle any of the, the problems you might have associated with your swimming pool, your income tax, your love life, whatever it might be. So. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks, Gil. And uh, and so this month on training, anything uh, that we can help, get a hold of us, and we will uh, we'll, we'll put Gil's uh, contact numbers below and probably get some of the class schedule dates up there real soon. So thanks for viewing Michigan Pool News. Thanks, Gil. Thank you.